the ducks had been laying eggs on this side of their uh, of the coop, which is impossible to forget to without limboing and covering myself in chicken and duck excrement. So I made a request, I guess unconsciously, and now this, the ducks tend almost every day. Watch it won't happen. But almost every day, they just drop an egg right by the door. See? They just are like, okay, you don't want it. In the other side, we'll just make it easy for you. We'll just put one right here. The chickens are the low maintenance surprise of ranch life, and the ducks. The ducks tend to whine and quack a lot, but the chickens are like totally tame, and they don't ask for anything, they just give eggs. And in a pinch, they give, you know, chicken dinners. The goats I got off Craigslist. They're Natalie and Melissa. I picked them up when they were not even weaned. I was still bottle feeding them. Um, I named them Natalie and Melissa for two singers that I like, but whose voices I think sound a little goat-like in Natalie Merchant and Melissa Etheridge. The Greek god Pan is not a goat by accident. These goats love to party. They have a sense of humor. They're genetically mischievous, which is why they're such good survivors. They can figure their way out of almost anything. And they love music. It's almost sometimes the only way to get them to do what I want is to sing to them, especially Bob Marley. I got them when I was still bottle feeding them, and so they want to be where I am. And um, they think I'm their dad or the herd leader or something. So the problem is they've got 41 acres of delicious stuff to munch. They do that for a while, and then they're like, hey, where's Doug? And they want to eat everything like right around the house. They raid my roses. I can't keep them out of my roses. The rose bushes up there are like the green zone in Baghdad. They're so well secured and I cannot keep the goats out of them. So here, I'm trying to see if I can really do it. Drive on vegetable oil instead of petroleum. Um, grow as much of our food as we can. Raise the food between the goats and the chickens. And then power the ranch by solar. So we are having a, actually having a solar moment here right now. Um, we had this big storm last night and the, uh, oh, hello goats. And the uh, grid electricity got knocked out. We have all our power here because we are on solar. So like this light right there, I turn it on and it goes on. And my laptop's going and we can blast the iTunes, all care of the sun. So the reality is, is that I've totally screwed up all over the place. I didn't know what I was doing as of a year and a half ago when I started this, but now I'm living here and my life is seamless. I feel like an American living in the lap of luxury. I have my laptop, I have my iTunes, I have lights, refrigerator, washing machine, all of it powered by the sun. I don't even notice 90% of the time that um, my life is powered by solar. And in fact, at this moment, we only have electricity because of solar because there's a power outage due to the storm for anybody that's on grid electricity. So. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it from scratch. Anybody can do it without any previous knowledge. Especially if they learn from the screw-ups that I made. No. Whoa! We were just up on the roof where the solar panels are covered with snow, not getting their maximum charge. It's early in the day. The sun just rose recently. And I'm on a 24-volt system. And we, my charge controller says we are at 24.8 um, power right now and that is with the stereo going inside we've been we've got the fridge going we've been running lights and charging things all day charging equipment and we are cooking the inverter inverts the direct current from the sun into the alternating current that Edison after stealing the idea from Tesla 100 years ago decided is the way we were going to do our electricity so all of our power inside the house is you know normal appliances you don't even notice it thanks to this inverter now if there's a cloudy day or at night these batteries hold the charge. There's 12 golf cart batteries under here, and I have the tarp over it and insulated because it's a leaky roof. I need to get on that. But um, the batteries are the environmental weak link in the entire system. The nickel mines that the nickel halide or whatever comes from is are, are environmental disasters. There's lead in there. There's sulfuric acid. This is like hypocrisy central, but there's not much we can do about it until we get hardcore on the, on the battery improvement technology. It's, it's of course, impossible to be hypocrisy free. These are Carhartts. I think they're made in the US, but I don't know how organic this brown dye is or whatever, or where, where the mining was done for this metal. These are things I want to think about, so I can't complain to be hypocrisy free. This is the Funky Butte Ranch's water supply. We decided to go with solar, which basically means no maintenance at all, no moving parts. The only catch is you've got to not die while you're installing the solar panels, which was um, a considerable challenge. So the water comes up from the Mimbris Aquifer, 140 feet down, care of a solar powered pump that these panels power thanks to that sun up there. We're really lucky that we have this star that's so close. The only thing I can say by way of sort of 
encouragement to people that are thinking about getting into this carbon neutral lifestyle is you start to almost die with less frequency after the first year or two. 